Hello, in this video, I'm going to be selling Rose of Dawn's Merc. Coffee has never tasted better than it has in this mug, which you can get at the Rose of Dawn store. Subscribe to her channel, and you might find a way to get to her Merc store. Otherwise, I don't really give a shit. I'm not here for her. I'm here for Elliot fucking Page. By the way, Ellen Page is now confused. Elliot Page. Yeah. Just be, listen, Good just be ready that. for the attacks because as a straight white male, you are given no quarter. <laughs> Who is Elliot Page? Let's talk about that. Elliot Page is a celebrity and I am very excited to invite them into the transgender community because they recently came out as trans. Who, who hasn't come out this year as fucking trans? Anyways, I really want to tell you about who they used to be because you've probably seen them in quite a few movies, but I can't dead name them. It's kind of this rule in the transgender community that if you change your name, there's no more mention of your past name because if I talk about, let's for example, my old name, if I bring it up here, I would be dead naming myself. Now you're probably thinking that's really dramatic and maybe it is. But actually it isn't, because every time I hear my dead name, I die a little bit more inside. It hurts. A tear comes out of my eye. I crawl into bed and hold tightly to the pillows and just sleep through my pain. Because dead naming is essentially bringing back a name that you have buried in the past. And I don't know about you, but obviously whatever happened in the past stays in the past. It's kind of like... What happened in Vegas stays in Vegas, you know what I mean? Like, we just don't talk about it. Well, this is a little bit like that, but more deep, because it does hurt. It kills people. It hurts people. There's tears. So, that's right. I'm talking about Elliot Page. So, uh, we don't dead name here, um, but I think that it's important for people to know Elliot Page. Who the hell is Elliot Page? Well, Elliot Page is Juno. <laughs> Um, from back in the day, right? So, uh, Elliot Page, uh, formerly known as E. Page. <laughs> All right, so this kind of gets me, right? Like, you went from not saying somebody's dead name to just saying their initials back then, which, by the way, are the same initials as today because E. Page could stand for Elliot Page or Ellen Page. Oh, wow. That's uh, clever there. <laughs> but this isn't surprising, right? Like, Aiden Dowling is has been raising his baby as a baby. He's been trying to avoid referring to his son as his son, even though even he can't get it right all the time. He'll literally say, you know, my son is uh, great or whatever, and then right below that, he'll, you know, throw a they pronoun. So he'll just flip back and forth. So he doesn't want you to assume his son's gender, but he's also using he, him pronouns sometimes, and also, don't say Ellen Page, just say E. Page, but also Elliot Page is E. Page today, so holy shit, I can't do this. I can't fucking do this. Look, look, Ellen Page is now Elliot Page. That's it. That is it. I do not understand why we are scared of certain things, why we create a barrier around us as though it is going to kill us if we hear our old name. It's totally different if somebody is consistently calling you by your old name, right? If you want to bury your past and pretend it doesn't exist and pretend you were never a female even though, you know, sex is immutable, then you're not trans because you cannot be trans without in some way acknowledging who you were or who you are, if that makes sense. So let's just fucking not do this. But of course, he's not the only one that had this... Really wild take. There are plenty of other people that uh, decided to comment on this and they were all quite hilarious. I'm aware of Elliot Page. Now, I am going to use um, his previous name, his dead name, just once for clarification in case anyone is not up to speed. I'm going to stop myself there because what I thought I needed to do was to say Elliot's dead name at least once to be sure everyone knew who I was talking about. However, this situation, that should not be necessary. Oh man, I don't know about you guys, but uh, my heart was racing. I really thought, I really thought she was going to say the dead name. I am so glad she stopped because I literally, I can't even... Oh my god, it's so hard being trans. The dead's names all over the place. Fuck. Because, much to my surprise, 
IMDb, Wikipedia, and Google have completely updated all of his references. Speaking of IMDb, I decided to check out the awards that Elliot had either been nominated for or won, and I'm going to go ahead and say we need to cancel those. Those awards, those nominations have got to be returned because they don't count because it wasn't Elliot. It was Ellen. It wasn't Elliot Page, the he, him. It was Ellen Page, the she, her. So I'm going to say this is bullshit. If, if referring to them as their old name is dead, then so is their career. Am I wrong? I mean, look at this. This is unbelievable. A nomination after a nomination. What the hell? Oh, and this one is just, this is transphobia. Alliance of Women Film Journalist? Are you kidding me? And Juno is in here as best actor? No way. This is, we're going to have to contact these people. This is fucked up. The transphobia is out of control. Guys, let's start a petition. You know what the best part about some of these people making a video on Elliot Page and basically telling me how I should think about this and how I should process it and how I should not mention their dead name and whatnot is the fact that they're a fucking joke, all right? This person in particular, not that I'm trying to police anybody, but they've never even had this for you. They've literally opted into being a trans woman just because. Hi there, my name's Vera. I'm trans. I don't have dysphoria. And this is a sort of representation that represents people like me who have had gender dysphoria. Like, do you see how annoying this is? It's not that, you know, somebody came out and said, hey, I'm trans. I mean, good for them. Fucking great. I hope it all works out for you. That's not the part that bothers me about this situation. What bothers me is all the nonsense that follows it, such as somebody who doesn't even fucking have dysphoria coming out making a video talking about what dead name is and you know all this crap about trans like shut the fuck up prepare yourselves uh dead name okay though i think when we're talking about a large public figure it, it is appropriate to use the name in this context but uh a actor formerly known as ellen page canceled you're fucking canceled you're done xander hall you're canceled no, but really, why isn't he? Because uh, plenty of people on Twitter lost their minds when anybody mentioned Ellen Page. When anybody said, man, I really used to like Ellen Page. When the lesbians were mourning because they lost another lesbians, it was wrong to mention Ellen Page. But hey, you know what? Xander Hall gets a pass because he's fucking Xander Hall. He follows all this bullshit ideology, so we understand. We get what you're doing and why you're doing it. It's such fucking hypocrisy and bullshit. Also, let's think about this for a second, right? Who changes their name? Is it only trans people? Or does nobody else in this world change their name, right? People get divorced, people get married, they change their last name. Sometimes people just change their name because they don't like their name. Not because they're trans, they just change their names. So why is it that any mention of my old name or anybody else's old name who is trans becomes a dramatic moment of, oh my God, dead name, but nobody else has to deal with this, right? Like, no other person that changes their name deals with the weight of a dead name. And now you might say, well, obviously it's because they're not trans and they're not dealing with, you know, their past self wasn't their authentic self or whatever. Maybe that's your argument, but to that I still say bull fucking shit because it's just a name, all right? Like, if you're already at the point where you changed your name, if you sign your name as your new name, if you're referred to by your new name 99% of the time and somebody mentions your own name once or somebody asks you what your own name is or maybe you get a piece of mail that says your old former name, your birth name, your dead name, is that really necessary for you to have a panic attack? Is that transphobia just chasing you everywhere? Absolutely not because that's realistic. It is realistic for your old and formal name to sometimes pop up. In fact, if you're going in for a job, some jobs, depends which ones, but some of them will require you to mention any old names, right? Like they'll ask you if you have any aliases, a former name, and you're gonna have to write it down. So what are you gonna do, go around just suing every job that you apply for because how dare they wanna ask about your past? Your past isn't going anywhere. And the sooner you come to terms with realizing that the past isn't going to hurt you as long as you accept it, and move from it, the better you're going to deal with 
a birth name popping up every once in a while, which is actually what we should call it. Not a dead name, a birth name. And if you haven't read the coming out letter that Elia Page wrote, it is on his Twitter, which you can find. I'm going to briefly skim through it, all right? So like the first couple paragraphs are him showing gratitude for the people that were in his journey. Uh, he starts off by saying, hi friends, I wanna share with you that I am trans. My pronouns are he, they, and my, my name is Elliot. I feel lucky to be writing this, to be here, to have arrived at this place in my life. And the third paragraph of his coming out letter just goes into the typical sort of narrative that I constantly hear from people on the left. And at this point, you're probably thinking, well, Mars, what's the problem? You know, and there is no problem. Congratulations, I'm happy for you. I hope things work out. Welcome to the transgender community and so on. But the third paragraph of this is where I really just kind of cringe because he goes on to say that uh, in 2020 alone, it has been reported that at least 40 transgender people have been murdered, the majority of which were black and Latinx trans women. Stop fucking saying Latinx. It is insulting, it is unnecessary. Say Latino, say Latina, or say Latin, which is pretty gender neutral if you ask me. And then he goes on to say to the political leaders who work to criminalize trans healthcare and deny our right to exist, and to all of those who have a massive platform who wanna to continue to spew hostility towards the trans community, you have blood on your hands. Just completely misses the mark, right? Like, how do you come out and you know, supposedly this is a happy moment, right? You come out, you're like, hey, I'm trans, these are my pronouns. And then you go straight to, by the way, this is what's happening where, you know, there's blood on your hands if you're not, if you're not doing this, if you're not fighting this fight, if you're not on this political uh, side. Um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm just like, okay, awesome. So essentially what we've gained is another trans activist that will blindly repeat the same things that everybody else says because dare I look into the truth. Now, as you can imagine, this blew up on Twitter and went trending for quite a while. And I can't say this enough. Congratulations, I'm happy for you. I hope everything works out. I hope it's for the best and so on. That's great. You know, there's nothing wrong with coming out and saying that you're trans. That's not it. That's not the point here. If it was that simple, if it was just somebody saying, I'm coming out as trans and that's it, nothing's gonna change, then there wouldn't be a lot of discussion around it, right? But people fail to get why this topic is so huge. Because Ellen coming out as Elliot now means you can no longer say their former name. Because Elliot coming out as trans means they have new pronouns. Because Elliot coming out as trans, ha it, it just creates so many questions, right? Elliot was at one point a lesbian. That's what they came out as. That's kind of who they represented in a way. And now that is gone. It has been completely erased. Now, for some people, they don't see this a big deal because if you choose to look at the world and everything from a gender point of view, if everything is about gender identity and nothing is about sex or sexual orientation, of course, of course you don't get it. And of course you look at this and think, well, obviously, you know, they were always a man. Like, fine, okay, that's how you wanna go about your life. That's how you wanna look at things. Fine, I'm not here to control you or convince you otherwise. But some of us choose to still live in a very realistic sort of way. And so I recognize that at some point, Elliot wasn't Elliot. You know, that's just a name. The name changed, but biological sex, sexual orientation, these are two very big topics and everybody's aware, which is why there's all this debate and confusion. Because now people are wondering, especially those that, you know, watch the uh, umbrella TV show that he's on, they're obviously going to wonder how this is going to play out in that role and the relationships they have on that in that uh, TV show or any other roles they're going to take. And I think these are fair questions to ask. These are normal things to wonder. I don't think we should go around shaming people and calling people transphobic because they have all these questions because they're suddenly confused by who Elliot is and what they represent or who they represent. Okay, these are normal questions. If you have a problem with that, then I would recommend you get off Twitter, just sign off, just be done with it, all right? The other thing too is lesbians do feel in a sense that they've lost another lesbian. Now, is that so wrong to feel? Because from my point of view, 
if a transgender person, let's say a really big name, right? Let's say Laverne Cox or someone like that. If they suddenly come out and they say, you know what? Uh, this actually isn't who I am. I'm going to detransition. I'm no longer trans. Wouldn't you as a trans person feel a sense of loss? Wouldn't there be a process that you personally feel that you have to take to cope with losing you know, a, a trans sister, let's say? Because I truly believe that there is. As a matter of fact, there's a detransitioner who used to be a trans guy who I've had on my channel a couple of times. And when they came out as detrans, not only did uh, that sit heavy with me because like obviously that sucks to hear because you never want somebody to transition and then detransition because that just means that at some point it was a mistake, right? And you don't want them to go through life in a more difficult way. But it sat heavy with me even more so because I felt like I connected to this person in a way that only trans people can, right? Like I felt like they got me because they understood my dysphoria. You know, I felt like we had this, this connection, this inevitable connection, which is no different than a lesbian connecting to, you know, Ellen Page, not because they're a celebrity or because they played a role, but because they know that they are or they were a lesbian. So it's very similar. So why, why are we suddenly expected to forget that we are humans Abandon any thought, any process that you're going through in saying goodbye to Ellen and hello to Elliot. I feel like that's really cold and a complete double standard. Because like I said, when a trans person detransitions, I truly believe that some of us would feel it. And it sucks. Furthermore, if you have a family, if you have friends, and you spent your life, let's say 20 years of your life, you know, as with Johnny and now suddenly you're Sally. If you suddenly change your pronouns, if you're medically transitioning... This is going to be something for people to adapt to. Not only are you going to process it and adapt to this new you, but so are people around you. Parents don't just magically get over who they raised, who they gave birth to. Maybe some parents, it's easy for them to just switch pronouns. But you don't think that even despite, even despite the fact that, let's say your parents were quick to use new pronouns and it was easy for them, you don't think that there's a process that they're still going through? You don't think that they're sort of like mourning the loss of who you used to be? Because they are. Because, again, we're human beings. We're very emotional people, okay? Like, even those of us that aren't as emotional as others, we're still going through some emotions. It's completely natural to feel a sense of loss. And questioning this, speaking out about this, expressing your feelings about you know, how you felt connected to Ellen Page and it really sucks to see her go and now it's Elliot Page. There's nothing wrong in saying this. And it's not phobia, right? Like, I've seen this over and over again on Twitter. Oh, well, look at all this transphobia. All these feminists, they're just so transphobic. No, they're not all transphobic. Maybe some of them are, but they certainly aren't all transphobic. Some of them genuinely feel bad because they looked up to a former lesbian. What the fuck is wrong with that? And some of them also can't help but notice that yet again, it's a girl coming out as trans. And this is something that we constantly see. Nobody wants to talk about it. We want to pretend that it's totally normal and there isn't an increase in lesbians coming out as trans men. Like, it's pretty obvious there's a pattern here. I'm not saying that it's a bad pattern or an evil pattern. We should stop it. But what I am saying is that there is a pattern here. People are noticing. And it's okay to wonder why that is. Why are so many people coming out as trans? I mean, do you see that many people coming out as a lesbian today? Because I don't. It's more likely today that you'll see somebody come out as non-binary trans or a trans man or a trans woman. It's more likely today that you'll see somebody come out as queer. But you're not going to see as often someone, you know, a woman come out and say, yeah, I'm, you know, a lesbian. Like, that is not something that we commonly see. We're seeing the opposite of that. We're seeing more people come out as trans. Or we're seeing a lesbian come out and say, actually, no, queer. I'm totally queer. There's no lesbian part of me at all. So just to kind of reiterate, I'm not saying that it is wrong or bad. I'm just saying that there is a pattern and people see it and it is odd and it is okay to question it. Another thing that I am saying is dead naming is bullshit. It's a fucking birth name. Get over it. And finally, what I'm saying is whether you come out as trans or non-binary, that's fine. Congratulations.
But guess what? Your journey is going to impact other people, be it in a positive way or negative way. I don't know. It depends who you put yourself around. But regardless of the fact, these people who you surround yourself with are also going to process your coming out, your transition. So if you want the whole world to affirm you, well, guess what? Give people a little time to adapt. The more you lash out at people because they didn't affirm Elliot right away because they used the wrong pronoun, the more likely people aren't going to give a shit and listen to what trans people have to say. So what's it going to be? Do you want to be a selfish prick or do you want to be a considerate, understanding individual towards other people? Because if you're not going to be considerate and understanding of others, why the hell should anybody be considerate and understanding of us?